Welcome East Texas to the ETFinalScore.com Weekend High School Football Preview. I am Bill Campbell and today I'll be visiting with some of our experienced Tyler Morning Telegraph sports writers about the upcoming 2012 high school football kickoff. First, I want you to know how excited we are to have taken our already largest sports staff in East Texas between our newspaper and CBS 19 and added the outstanding voice of football in Harlan Lobley and East Texas Radio Group. We will be using all of our resources this year to bring you the same top-notch coverage that we've provided to East Texas for the last 100 years, but now we'll be adding video and audio to the mix. Keep up with your kids and your community by visiting ETFinalScore.com and TylerPaper.com. coverage, more experience, more stats, and that's final. ET Final Score is brought to you by Ashley Furniture. Now let's get down to business. There's a lot of talk already about this year's John Tyler team not only getting back to the playoffs, but taking it home. Let's bring in Harold Wilson to give us the goods. Harold, how are you? Pretty good. What do you think about John Tyler I this year? I think this got this has the potential to be a very big season. You just look at the number of returning starters. They've got almost every guy played last year on that team and they've got the star power. You know, you it's good to have guys back, but they've got the quality guys back. Not only quantity but quality. And I mean you look at the last three years, they've won thirty five games the last three years alone. Just looks like they're on the cusp of something very big. Tell me I've heard a lot about Coach Holmes. I've happened to see, I've seen some of the interviews yeah. Eric's done over at the TV station. And uh, can you share with me some? You know, what kind of impact is is he going to have on JT well, this year? First, he brings energy. You know, John Tyler was very strong the last few years, but at times they seemed like they were going through the motions, especially on the defensive side of the ball. You know, they lack that killer instinct. They lack that physicality. He brings youth. He brings excitement, but. Maybe more importantly, he brings a guy that knows John Tyler. He played there in the late 1990s, was a great player at Oklahoma State, played for a little while with New England. So he knows football. He knows John Tyler. He knows these players. Been an assistant the last five years. So I think it's a secret weapon for John Tyler on the coaches, on the coaching staff. Well, great news for everybody over there then. Mm -hmm. Well, that's good. Uh, I'm excited about it. I guess you'll be at the game. I'm ready. <laughs> All right, man, I appreciate your time. Right. We'll see you again next week. Hey, thanks for having me. All right, brother. So again, Harold Wilson is the man for uh, John Tyler coverage. Be sure and keep up with uh, him throughout the year to follow JT uh, at ETFinalScore.com. Of course, the Tyler Morning Telegraph and through our partners at East Texas Radio Group and CBS 19 TV. Uh, now we're going to move on to uh, Mr. Perry, Chris Perry, who uh, knows everything there is to know about Robert E. Lee football. Or try to. <laughs> <laughs> uh, tell us what's going on over there. They have a new coaching staff as well, and not only do they have a new head coach, they, got a, they have a new offensive coordinator, they have a new defensive coordinator, they even have some new position coaches. It, it's, it's, kind of, it's kind of a time of, of, of refresh and renew, and, and I think that things are going to be really good for them. I mean, the staff that was there in place, and there still are a few coaches that were able, that okay. were then kept over from the new staff, and it's nice to see some of the old faces still there, but that staff had been there for 10, 15 years, and it, it, this, is, this is a new situation, it's, uh, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm looking forward to it and seeing what Daryl Piskey and, uh, and, and Coach Anderson and Coach Roberson, uh, the off, you know, defense and offensive coordinator, are going to be able to do. Well, I know you spend a lot of time around campus, around practice, around those guys and what they do every day. Uh, what's the feel you get from the players? I mean, is there, is there a renewed energy? I mean, these guys ready to go? I think there's renewed energy, and I think we even hit it in our football preview. They want to take off and leave last season behind. I mean, yeah, and yeah. Even, I mean, even we set it up when they're in front of a plane. They want to take off and leave last season behind. I mean, they, they think that with the, with the new coach and some of the new ideas and some of the new things, not that last season you know, didn't have a great people and, and they had a plan, it just didn't right, work. Right. And now they're going to try a new plan and see if this plan works. So we get a look at the plan this weekend. Tell us a little bit about the game coming up this weekend. What Saturday we night, Sulphur Springs, the final game of the Trinity Mother Francis football classic, uh, rain permitting, <laughs> rain and lightning that's, that's permitting. That's a good point. We mentioned that uh, in another another conversation earlier that 
Thursday could have some bad weather. We'll kind of see what happens in a lot of the football games that are going on. But but if it does get underway, what do you expect to see out of that game? I'm looking forward to it because right now the only question at Robert E. Lee, and it's really a question because of an injury and because of and because there's a lot of guys who are really, really good, uh, Jordan Richardson kind of won the job. Uh, the, the receiver who was a junior receiver who was a transfer from Terrell before last season, he played yeah. wide receiver for, for Robert E. Lee. He won the quarterback job. He was pretty much going to be the quarterback. Well, he got an injury right before, the, right before the end of spring ball. Didn't get a chance to play in the spring game. And to the other guy's credit, Christian, uh, Christian Diosdado and Riley Poster, who were sophomores becoming juniors, they took advantage. They ran with it. They were the quarterbacks all through 7-on-7 seven -seven football, got lead of the state 7-on-7 uh, seven -seven tournament, got them in the championship bracket, and they've been taking all of the reps and getting better and better and better. Now with Jordan coming off, now finally uh, coming off that injury, they're probably not going to play him this first game. So it's kind of interesting to see kind of what Robert E. Lee we're going to see against Sulphur Springs. That's a great point. Great information, too. And I suppose we can share with everybody that you're going to be at the game. Absolutely. I'm looking forward to it. So uh, if you happen to get out to the game, look for this guy. Who knows? He may have some T-shirts or footballs hanging out of his bag. He'll share with you. And uh, I want to thank you for being on the show and remind everybody here to uh, check in every Friday from this point forward uh, to see what's going down at etfinalscore.com. Absolutely. Chris, thank Thanks you, for having brother. me. Thanks a lot. All right. Again, that was Chris Perry, uh, who covers Robert E. Lee throughout the year. Be sure and follow him, of course, in the Tyler Morning Telegraph, CBS 19 TV, East Texas Radio Group, and on etfinalscore.com. Uh, Chris talked about quarterback changes. Uh, that's probably a topic we can get into in some of our East Texas schools as well as I bring in Shane Stark. Shane, how are you, man? Doing all right, man. How about yourself? I'm, I'm great. It's good to have you. Why don't you tell us a little bit about, and maybe before we get into the quarterback changes, I happen to be a Bulldog fan. Thomas Sitton uh, is a good friend and, and I think a great guy. And, and why don't you talk about uh, their chances on maybe repeating a state championship this year? Well, I do know one thing is that they don't return a lot from last year. Uh, a lot of senior science scholarships after that season. So, obviously, when that happens, you got a team that's good enough to go 15-0 and 0 and uh, go all the way unbeaten. You may sometimes lose that's some players, and, and that's what happened to them. But uh, returning three starters may scare some people a lot, but I think they're excited uh, about what, what, they got, what they have in store. The thing about this team is they're really going to be battle-tested. Uh, by the time they do get to 16-3A, which a lot of people are calling the District of Doom, they're going to be going to have played teams like White House, Lindell, Carthage, Palestine, teams that a lot of people are, are thinking big things for. So Tough I think schedule. when they, they get into that district, these younger players are going to be well seasoned uh, beyond their years probably. So I like their chances. Good game this week. Oh, yeah. Of Lindell. Course. I mean, right off the stick, right? That's, right? that's big. So I'd mentioned quarterback changes. What, what are some of the things happening around the East Texas area that – that people should be interested in with quarterback. Well, I know you just you know look back at Chapel Hill. You know they lost a you know state championship winning quarterback in every signs, uh, but they got a, a move in from Jacksonville named uh, 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 Andrew Black, uh, Ryan Black's younger brother, who should uh, bring some good things to the table. Uh, you go to White House, lost a quarterback. You go to Gilmer, lost a quarterback. You go to Henderson, lost their quarterback. I mean we're talking about some of the top offenses right. in the area are going to be plugging in new new players at those positions. So. We're going to learn a lot probably uh, this weekend and moving forward. Well, speaking of this weekend, you obviously cover a huge territory. You've been uh, you've done some outstanding work uh, for the newspaper and CBS. If you were, you're going to watch this weekend and you only got one game to catch, who are you going to watch? Well, there's a couple. I mean, you, know, you Chapel Hill, Lindell. I mean, I know uh, uh, you know Chapel Hill's had their number the last couple of years, and Lindell's got them in their backyard. It's going to be a probably packed house. I know that when those two teams play each other, they have to bring out extra seats and stuff like that because they just, you know, they like to they play each other. Yeah, they fill it I up. I remember then, last year, I, it was tough to get in the stadium. Yeah, if you don't get there at 6 o'clock, you may not get you a forget ticket. forget about it. Yeah, I, I remember away. people last year backing their trucks up on the grass hill and sitting on lawn chairs in the, in the back of the truck to watch. Yeah, that's or party. trying to watch. <laughs> it's a party out there. Uh, then you look over at uh, Tatum and Art in 2A. That's a good matchup. That's uh, two state-ranked teams. Both have high aspirations. Uh, ARP is a team that, as, as people have seen in our section this morning, uh, have a lot going for them, and they, they really want to make this season about winning a state championship, which they haven't been able to do, even though they've had all these great runs in the, in the postseason recently. So right off the bat, Tatum-ARP, that's like 
it's like Michigan Alabama. I mean, it's a huge <laughs> game that everybody's going to enjoy probably. Awesome. Well, oh, man, this is this is good stuff. You'll be at. I'll be at White House. You will be at White House. New quarterback position there, so fantastic. Well, if you get out to a game this weekend and and uh, can see this man covering it, make sure and holler at him. Who knows? He may have a T-shirt in his bag for you or something like that. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, appreciate hey. it, man. Thanks, Great man. stuff. Thank you. Okay, so again, that was Shane Stark covering our East Texas area schools. Very thankful for him being here. Make sure that you stay tuned to etfinalscore.com. Uh, of course, check him out in Tyler Morning Telegraph and with our partners over at East Texas Radio Group and CBS 19. And speaking of a couple good games, we're going to talk now to Travis Yostin, who covers all of our TAP stuff. So uh, you're going to be out and about this weekend. Who we need to be checking out, man? That's right. Well, we got two uh, football classics. Brook Hill is opening uh, tonight, Thursday night, uh, and then uh, they'll be playing Frankston. And then at the Tyler Football Classic over at Grace's Clyde Perkins Stadium, uh, Grace will be open against San Augustine, of course, that's weather permitting. And then uh, we got Bishop Gorman, they're going to be opening up uh, on Friday night and All Saints play Saturday. Fantastic. And, and we had talked uh, earlier with Chris and with Shane about some changes, you know, around some of the schools. And, and uh, there's been some coaching changes, I guess, with some of the TAP schools, too. And, and I'll let you talk about that. And more importantly, I'm not even going to begin to try and talk about what's happening with who's playing in what division. There seems to be a lot of movement uh, there, and, and I got, like I said, I can't begin to explain it. Maybe you could help our viewers understand what's going on. Well, first of all, uh, Gorman has a new coach, Kobe Gibson. He was the uh, offensive coordinator at Grace the last few years, and he hopes to revitalize that offense, which has been a little bit uh, slow, I guess, in the last couple of years. And then uh, All Saints has a new coach, Mike Hall. He comes over from the Dallas area. You know, he brings a ton of experience over to All Saints. And uh, as for the districts, All Saints, uh, they'll be independent this year. They opted uh, out of the district that uh, will now include Brook Hill, Gorman, and Grace, all in Division Two. Brook Hill, Gorman, and All Saints have all been in Division Three last couple of years. Of course, Brook Hill won a state championship in Division Three, so they'll have a new challenge at the higher level. And then, uh, you know, Grace obviously has the experience at Division Two. They'll be up there in that district, which also includes a couple. Uh, strong teams from the Dallas area and it, it should be a lot of fun. You see anybody coming out and just throwing it down right off the top or or do you think it's going to be competitive for those three teams down that same district? Going to be pretty competitive? I think it's I think all three have a great chance to make the playoffs. Uh there's it's, it's an 18 district. Four of them make the playoffs and all three of them should be right there. I think Grace and Brook Hill definitely uh will be right there and Gorman they've got a shot. Yeah, we talked with Shane earlier about Chapel Hill turning over a lot of players, possibilities of them going back. Obviously, as a fan of that school, you you know, we're going back, baby. Uh, Brookhill, what about them? Are they, they keeping a lot of players? They turn them over? Do you think they'll get back to the state championship? They're, they're a lot like Chapel Hill. They lost 18 seniors, which pretty much their entire team last year. But they do return their quarterback. Will Weathers, he was an all-state player. He can really lead that offense. They've got a couple of linemen that are back that can really, you know, pave the way for – the younger guys who've been waiting, you know, they their younger guys got a lot of playing time in the last few years because they'd blow all their other teams out. So uh, they're they're ready for the new challenge. Very cool. And where are you going to be this weekend? I'll be at Grace all three nights. Uh, you got, you know, three Tyler schools will be there, and uh, I'll be covering all of them. All right, my man. Nice to have you. Appreciate all the good information. Certainly. All right, brother. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right, well, that's our show today, East Texas. I want to thank everybody again for checking in at etfinalscore.com. I want to remind you that uh, although we're on the air today, Thursday the 30th, typically it's going to be a Friday show on etfinalscore.com, and I want to remind you to please check back, check in on your teammates, check in on your community and your kids, and see what's happening in East Texas football. Speaking of what's happening in East Texas football, let's talk about star power. Also today in the Tyler Morning Telegraph, uh, they launched out their annual football section you'll see coach Holmes roaring lines there ready to go make sure you pick a copy up in all the nice uh, yellow racks you see around East Texas uh, you need to check this out it's good stuff so again thank you check back frequently at etfinalscore.com for videos updates audio uh, stay in touch with our partners at CBS 19 East Texas radio group and of course read our Tyler Morning Telegraph <laughs>